What is up, YouTube? Uh, <laughs> I hope I don't record this entire tutorial and this music overpowers my voice, but, uh, I really just fucked around a lot with that, so I think I get it right. Now, uh, someone requested a tutorial, so I figured I'd post one. Because, for me, the first time I played this was in 20, I got the 2010 game. Fucking confused the shit out of me. Then I saw they had the 2020, and I played that, and I understood it a lot better. And I just realized we got two conflicting sounds. So first, I want to go over that they, if my tutorial isn't at all helpful, that they have a PDF, a PDF manual which will go in details about it. They have the forms and it's pretty much all they got to help. They also have a tutorial too, but I haven't played it and I don't think tutorials in these games are helpful like that. It's more hands-on, so you have your basic things like this. We're going to jump into the Road to War and uh, we're gonna pick the mighty USSR. USSR, yeah. I like to add an extra S. <laughs> so, you have your basic game controls here, which I can go in detail, but usually if you hover over it, it lets you know what it does, which it doesn't. Electricity sales means you can sell electricity. Random events is random events. Allow government change allows you to change your government type. Critical United Nations, if you declare war about Acosta's belly, meaning the other countries will hate you more. Approval effect shows how much people want to be friends with you. Or uh, how hard it is to get... It, it just affects how you approve to other countries. Initial funds, high means you're more in debt and it's gonna loop, so trust me. That's not the last. That's not. This isn't. This song's just gonna be on repeat, so trust me. If it gets repetitive, tell me, and I'll switch it out for one hour of Soviet music. Resources is just. You could have depleted or abundant, so we're gonna go with depleted just for the for sakes of this tutorial. We have game setting, scheduled game end. Military difficulty, economic difficulty, and then political dip or, uh, diplomacy difficulty. It just measures how hard the game's going to be for you. Allied victories. If you have all, if all countries are your allies, I think that's what it means. Is you get a victory that way. Fixed capitals means you can't move your capital. Hot relations is the likelihood that the war will break out. Start game without units exactly what it means you start out with no units fog of war enhanced spotting enhanced ranges we'll get into these two later on units eliminated in region falls if we invade poland and we take out all of its unit or uh we grab its capital and they surrender this will depend this will allow them to either give us their units or if we click it all their units will be eliminated allow nuclear weapons nuclear weapon penalties diplomatic merchant marine Trade units have to move from the buyer to the seller when uh, selected. Weather system, it's just, we're gonna disable that for now. Because I tried playing a game and it fucking froze it half to shit, so. Fog of war, oh, that's the same thing, uh. So that's basically it. And then you got your stats here. So let's jump into the game. Oh, and before I forget, we get the victory conditions down here. Complete hold objective. It's just uh, we're gonna pause it now and we're gonna jump into the main game. So we are in game. It's paused, of course, but uh, where to start? Where to start? Um, uh, like I said, it's we're gonna suck if that music overpowers me, because then I'd have to go through this entire thing again. And sorry if I'm rushing. I just really wanna get this over with. Because, uh, I don't know why. It's like 11, so I really want to get it done with for now. 
and work on getting you guys more videos. So we have our alert messages. Diplomacy, espionage, defense, t technology, economic, world, and catch all. Catch all. Oh. Oh, it's like tips. Alright. Alright. So, Diplomacy C is like the League of Nations of the game. It tells you what basically is going on, like the second that the Italian and Ethiopian War and Germany reoccupying the Rhineland. Like, we're gonna support that because why not? Now, uh, I know in Cold War, because like someone pointed out, it's just a basic retexture of the Cold War game, which I'm not gonna lie, kind of reminds me of that, just with some new features, and for some fucking reason it keeps on pausing whenever you do something like this. But, uh, in I'm not sure if it's the same in Cold War as in Cold War, but you have your Spears of Influence. And of course we have the Axis, which is the Germans and the Italians, and then we have the Allies, which is UK, France, Russia, and the United States. And either you could try and take over the world through Spears of Influence, or just by conquering them. Which, I prefer conquering, because why not? Conquering is fun. So, we have our Spears of Influence down here. And then we have our world map. And it just, these are just different filters. I mean, I could go in detail, but each one is self-explanatory. So, and you could do this. I didn't know you could do that at first. So, <laughs> I actually like this feature. So we're gonna put that down in the corner. We're gonna jump over here to. We are not. We're gonna jump up here because this is too meat field. Save the best for the last. But uh, here we have the uh, game clock. It tells you what time it is. It's currently 10 a.m. We could unpause it and then we could select our speed. It tells us the date and the year. And if we had any objectives, it would be shown up here. It tells you the country's name, the flag, the uh, amount of money you have in treasury. And then you have the regional atlas, which I'll go into more detail about later. But basically, another thing is that I like about this is it has keeps the stats for the dead countries, like the dead regions that you take over, which I'm one for stats, so I enjoy that a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. And then it's got colonies, so you could do it like that, or you can just do this. But it just gives you a ton of stats, like destabilizing activities, at war, all that cool stuff. Oh, I forgot to show off the rest of the tabs. Then it gives you like the uh, government tab, the uh, thingy tab, and then the score tab. Which, if you're playing like a score-based game or anything else, that would come in handy. Then you have uh, daily figures and then annual figures. And you get the game menu. So to the meat field section of this. Where to start at? Let's start out at land. Each of these is a cabinet. And apparently you could lower this one too. But each one is a cabinet. You got the state cabinet, the financing cabinet, the resources cabinet, the research cabinet, the uh, can defense production, and then the regular defense tab. Here you can uh, simply see what type of land it is. You can see its loyalty, its weather, and then if it has a building, it will pop up here. For some reason, it's not repaired. It tells you to supply, and if there's any unit presence, it'll pop up here. Battle zone settings, and then theater control settings. Theater control and uh, battle zone control is primarily the same thing, 
Except battles and is more specific. Military focus is just what type of what is your army going to be doing over here? If it's defensive, they'll mainly sit on towns and do nothing. But if it's on offensive, they'll go on and capture enemy land within that area. Military priority, none. No units will be dispatched to that area. High will have a high dominance or high superior force in that area. Diplomatic focus, I really don't know what this is. I guess it's if you uh, let the AI do stuff. I really don't play around with that. And then, uh, let's see. Let's move on over to the state tab. This is how you conduct diplomacy in the game. So let us find a person that would most likely be inclined to trade with us. Fuck. There isn't gonna be. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got someone. Tana Tava. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But, uh. Tana Tanav. And we could, uh, trade with him because we're neutral. We're allied. And, uh. It'll tell you what government they are like he's a colony for me tell you their population and how much they have in the treasury they'll tell you their uh, diplomatic information and uh, how strong I think they are with each one like economically they're weak militaristically they're weak and each time you hover over one it'll tell you stats about it like domestic, it'll tell us how much people immigrate, emigrate, how many people are born, and how many people die, and how much people are illiterate. It's political leaning. The economy. It'll tell you the inflation, unemployment, and all that. And uh, you could do the same for your country too. Like this. It'll also tell you. Uh, pick this guy, Bulgaria. It'll also tell you the guy's name, Tsar Boris III, Adolf Hitler. And then it'll tell you their military approval down here, their domestic approval rating, and their uh, treaty integrity, which is something to get... Ah, it's complicated. It's like, how much did you League of Nations like some? Allied regions, enemy regions, colonies, and then uh, existing agreements between us and them. And then, we we'll click on Poland here. <laughs> and then it'll tell you region relationship. Right now, Poland is very hostile towards us. They hate us diplomatically, they're civilian. So, diplomatic means how our leaders. Look, uh, look at each other. So right now, Poland hates us dipl diplomatically, and then civilian is how the people look at us. Kasis Beli and Provokis, Prov, Ah, fuck! I can't speak. Provokis, Provok. You see, I hit random words that I can't pronounce, and then I fucking stutter. So, uh, go ahead and make fun of me in the comments for that provocation. There we go. Provocation is, uh... Oh, God, I'm gonna fucking word it wrong, ain't I? Provocation is... Giving them the right to attack you, like, provoking them. So right now, Poland... Is provoked enough to probably launch an attack on us, and Casas Belli is their right, like how much the League of Nations would look down on them right now is pretty high if they attacked us right now. And then it tells us their uh, outlook on us. Like right now we're neutral, but if we were at war we'd be enemies, and if we were allies they would say that. Now down to the cabinet and then all that cool stuff. And you can see your cabinet minister, you could have them do 
things like this. Give them custom priorities. You can tell them to fund insurgency in... Oh, nope, nope, I didn't want to get into this stab yet. You can tell them to fund insurgency, government support, total espionage, you could give them all that. Then we could negotiate with regions doing this. The Cordile, which is very nice to us. And then they'll give you a basic thing. Uh, for treating existing agreements, we could like... We cannot tell them. Oh wait, we have to go over here. And you could tell them to do things like... Suggest that you like... See, we want criminal extradic... Extra, extradition from uh, Germany, but they would un they would not accept that because they're dick fakes or uh, dick faces. And then here you could uh, it's new it's a new feature by the way. You could auto accept featured balanced or better c commodity and money offers. You could click here to ignore economic offers from the region and military unit offers from the region as well. Here we could trade resources straight up. We could do it. Give them 172 million ton or 172 thousand tons of agriculture straight up. We'll give them a thousand daily for seven days, 30, 90. Then we can give them. Uh, we could request technologies, or we could give them technologies. Then we could give them. We could trade military designs, then military units, but we cannot request any of their military units. We can only send them requests from ours. And then you could uh, change the offer expiration date. Yeah, I think that would usually work if multiplayer cases. Influence region. Here we could support the government or uh, support the opposition. We could have military units have war on er incursions, path around. We could fund the insurgency, giving them modern equipment and give them high funding. Severe actions, we could declare war. Condemn foreign troop placement by the regions. We could support it or condemn wars by the region. Then you could deploy spies to the region by doing that. Deploying the spies, um, let's put them on immediate focus there. Uh, I don't know what they're doing. Normally you could uh, tell them to do like sabotage and all that stuff. Uh, then here we have our diplomatic relations. Okay. Yeah, diplomatic relations. So we could see who their allies are, their enemies, and their colonies. Then here we can control facilities. Now moving on to economic, we can see uh, overall stats here and here. We could tell our minister to do things. Ugh. Most of it is self-explanatory, like income report, expenses, previous state trades. Uh, taxation is how much we tax the people. You could individually set it like this and tax the hell out of them. And lower one, or you could just decide to do this. And then you have uh, social spending, social spending, which uh, you could do the same thing. Just go into independent ones. One thing I recommend in social spending is that you raise up infrastructure high enough, education high enough, and uh, health care, and then law enforcement later on down the road, and then everything else. And here we can uh, build roads and stuff like that. Resources. Uh, let's see, let's just pick something. 
like this. Well, no, uh, let's just go with timber. You can see production. This is how much we make of it. And this is how much we use. And this is how much we have in stock. And then this will tell us how much it costs to produce it. And then the market price. Then we could do stuff with the minister. Industry controls. We could tell them to... 100% of demand or capacity and it tells you the estimated output and then uh, how much reserves we have and then how much we could sustain ourselves on our own and then we could do uh, domestic prices this is how much we sell to the people and then this tells us the uh, consumption how much people want it or how many uh, things go to the people and stuff like that and how many goes how much raw materials is used. Gives you what stati statistics on imports, exports, consumers and producers. And then uh you could bulk port purchase things, so if we wanted to we could buy that much for that much. We'll buy as needed up to seven dollars. And then we could sell things off and then that. Now research over here it will tell you research efficiency minister focus our rank technologically and how many projects we can work on now there is one two three four five six main research things we could choose from warfare which will help us better in war transportation which will help us in war times as well science technology, medical, and society. These bottom four, five, two, three, yeah, bottom five will usually help with the uh, population as well as the four. Then we can move on to land unit designs. Then we can research air units, sea units, and then missile units. But uh, let's see if we can find one. Right here, half track. It needs land force improvements. So we cannot effectively research half track infantry without getting land improvements. So what you want to do is go through here and boom, you can set that up. Then research the other guy afterwards. Then do we need something for this? No. This is Land force improvements is also a non-tradable thing, so once we complete it, we cannot we cannot trade it away to other people. This means it is weak. Ah, give me a minute. Ah, I'm sorry guys. Guys, stuffy nose. Uh so carry hydraulic catapults. This is needed for air carriers. So once we get this, we can start doing stuff for air carriers. And uh, this is an era technology, which, I don't know, helps us out in the era, I guess. But that's pretty much the technology tab. Now we go to production. And then, uh, here we have how much we can put on salaries and the maintenance and training. So if we really wanted to, we could spend two million in maintenance and training. Here is our initiative, low initiative. If you set it to none for each one, that means the minister will not control any of your military units. But if you're like me and you like having your minister do things outside of war, Okay, there we go. But if you like me and you like having your minister do things outside of the war, then you can set it to full and he'll move your units around. And then in times of war, you could take it off and control your units manually. Or you could set it to full and he'll uh, set up an attack. Same goes for each one. Then you could have lock him from military spending and lock him from the garrison's controls. Here we can build our units, so if you really wanted to, we could build six Spetsnaz brigades. 
then here we can choose to auto deploy them or have them continuously build. What this means is once the unit is done being built, he will automatically deploy outside of the barracks where he was made. And continuous build is he will continually be put on construction every time he finish it, finishes. And then uh, after that we have our fabrication options. So if you wanted to, you could have the uh, AI choose what to build and what not to build. Tell them to focus offensively or defensively or balanced. Tell them to focus on quality or quantity. And then, uh, um, this from mis yeah, that's for missiles, which we'll get into in the later topic. Because personally, going over military units deserves an entirely different topic. That's not a tutorial. That's that's fucking. I'll, I'll make a video about it, don't worry. Then we have our alert conditions, so we could attack neutral regions and incur our paths. Allow air units to pass over neutral regions. We could use nuclear weapons. Battle zone, and then this, which we covered last time. And here we can see our uh, selected units, deployed units, and reserved units. Which, if we wanted to, we could... Deploy this infantry unit all the way out here. Yeah, I got interrupted. But if we wanted to, we could deploy a unit, and he will be deployed right outside his barracks, and then we can move him by simply getting him. And if we wanted to, let's let's move with the Mosk Moskva, and then you right-click, which they changed from 2020. You you can't right-click in 2020. I'm used to left clicking to uh, move units, which you can't do. But with units, you could tell them to move to patrol. Patrol is if I set it to like this bridge, he'll move there and then go back to where uh, he started, which would be there. Load into, you can load into like uh, transports and all that attack unit. Attack facility, escort, he'll escort someone, air transport, sea transport, and that would mean uh, he would go to the nearest airfield slash port and await transport from either the airplanes or sea load unit. I think that's only works with, uh, <laughs> with the, uh, what do you call it? Transports, repair. If he's taken a lot of damage, you can send him back to the barracks to repair, reserve. Send him back to the barracks in trench to uh, fortify himself inside wherever you tell him to entrench. Split unit, you will split his size in half and his scrap will just tell him to uh, disband, basically. It also tells you how much reserve personnel you have and then how much active personnel you own. The orders, global walls of engagement, so you can select to have them be cautious or fast as we can be. Their route, their initiative, contact options they could avoid, pursue, or engage. Their loss tolerance, a high loss to tolerance, means they'll likely stay there till they die. We can apply that to all. Unit is subject to global wall changes, which if you we just had him, and we could set his role individually, minister control, that will also disable the minister from touching any of these units, opportunity fire, he will attack only, he'll attack any enemy, but if it's on, he'll only attack targets that you select, he is, approaches, uh, He'll take land, but if it's on, he won't capture any enemy land. So that's pretty much all that. Missile control, if we had any missiles, they would show up here. Uh, I, I think I covered it. I can't believe I just covered it that fast. I'm, imp I'm impressed. 
I'm seriously impressed right now <laughs> I managed to complete this tutorial that fast. Oh, wow. This uh, song is starting to get to me now, so I'm glad I ended it now. Or I got done that fast, so... If there, if I did not cover anything, or I didn't cover anything in Beast, or uh, in Death, then uh, let me know, because I will look into it, and we control this entire region of sea up here, I don't, why? Do the Americans control theirs? No, that's, can't, that's weird. We control the entire northern uh, Arctic. But uh, like I said, if I didn't cover anything in depth, death, got a hint to it. Like I said, I travel words sometimes. If I didn't cover everything, let me know in the comments, and I'll either reply to them, or if it's something I really missed out on, I will go back and make another video talking about it because I know some of these require an entire video to discuss like military units so if you need any more tutorials or this one wasn't helpful enough just leave a comment and let me know because I am here to please you guys well at least you got at least people that aren't dicks so I hope you guys enjoyed this nice little tutorial and yeah if I got things wrong let me know too so my brother Rebel signing off see you guys